Another drop, John. Oh, yep. May as well take the uh, take the edge off. Yeah, that's the spirit. Huh. Huh. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Billy, I don't know your god. I don't know his views on modern architecture, but I'd have never painted this church white. Mm. Stands out. Looks like the one good tooth in a mouth full of rotten ones. Well, I suppose maybe it is. Kind of you to say. I like to think of myself as a good dentist. Huh, huh. Yeah, well, give you your due. <sighs> Those scientists, fellas. I gotta admit, surprised it's them that's kicked all this off. They seemed odd, unfinished when I met them. Like a axolotl out of its lake. You know? I know. Made a lot of noise for a handful of lizards. They did. But then, a lizard can still bite after it's dropped its tail. Uh. You could tell they was they was forged in violence. All of them in their, their own strange ways. You know, distant from it, though distant from their ancestry. Couldn't say they'd ever throw a punch any of them, but if they did, I could see it connect. Even that gimpy bug fella, you know, had something of an edge to him. You know, still. I remember my first pastor telling me, a pig can bite and bite. It can even overpower the farmer, do him wrong, tear his throat even, eat his essentials. But a pig is still a pig. It's still a pig, <laughs> however strong. He hmm. can't undo the locks on the gate after, you know. And it'll starve there. That or a new farmer will come along and the abattoir mincer will grind that old pork up all the same. No matter mm. how righteous his indignation is. Oh. Never, never liked that church. Oh, I uh, don't reckon I'd have done either. Mm. Uh, so, uh, your shop, uh... My home and my shop. I know. They, uh... It'll be burning now. Motherfucking... Hunts. Hey, language. In the, in the house of the Lord? <laughs> that holy old bastard don't care. <laughs> He'll still be on our side if he's on anyone's. Well, I'll take all the help we can get. Yeah, me too. <sighs> Here. We're friends, ain't we? Of course. Good. Why'd you ask that? Uh, dunno. Cause I'll never see my parents or my sisters again. Just thinking of them. Yeah. My folks are all over the world, spread out. They're good people, as it goes. Yeah. Most of them, anyway. Well, <laughs> the family, anyway. Well, uh, most of my family, well... Some of them, at least. <laughs> uh, I reckon I'm okay. <laughs> uh, I reckon you are. What I mean is, I know that every misplaced bastard rocking up in a new place means some bastard from there don't get a fair chance. Oh, that's bullshit. You ain't no Puritan. Oh, guilty, I guess. <laughs> There's good folks. There's bad folks. Either side of that fucking border, either side of that old pond, and far beyond and all. So long as nobody pushes any shit in other folks, doesn't disrespect what they shouldn't, there ain't no guilt in existing. Wish you taught us that at seminary. I, I'm your age, you cheeky <laughs> fucker. Uh, you sure now? Put your hand on the good book there. Tell me you ain't the raggedy grandfather of old, huh? old Billy Goat. <laughs> oh, is that right? Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. Come here, you. Ah, I, I yield. I, I yield. <laughs> uh, 
that uh that good book that gonna help us at all now do you reckon couldn't say like they do is better than that fucking one you got on you there what's it called again uh, the vermis mysterious <laughs> sounds a fucking mouthful uh, I never got on with Latin. Thank fuck for Martin Luther, I'll be out of a job. <clears throat> well, amen. Not that I speak German, either. Well, no, me neither. Anyway, this is what they're here for. <sighs> Don't suppose it'd do any good asking them in for a drink. Hmm, 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 hmm. Still, at least I won't need to worry about the size of my flock come Sunday. Oh, it'll be bigger, I'm sure, than it has been these last years. You ain't wrong. Here, pass that bottle. Yeah. Uh, well, God be with you. Yeah, uh, and also with you. Uh, shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, you good to go, John? Good to go, Billy. Bring it in, man. Uh, right. All right. Let's get these cunts. Yeah. Come here, you fucking mutant freaks. Till I get hold of you. Now turn your insides out. Get your book if it matters that much. Come on. Take it. Uh, 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 it. Uh, fucking inbred. Uh, Come take that. Uh, and that. Uh, yeah. Land, motherfucker. Yeah, come on, you fucking lizard freak. Yeah, dead head, yeah. take a bite of peach. I make friends with some shit, boy, boo. Yeah, you and your mother. And your sister. <laughs> the Apocalypse Players present Highway of Blood. A Call of Cthulhu scenario by Alex Bidiot. Ian Christensen and DeVay Brian Jackson with Dan Wheeler as Quincy J. Lafitte Dominic Allen as Edward Ed Mooney Joseph Chance as Beverly Jack Carstairs and Dana McAleer as the keeper of arcane law. This is based on a true story. Part 14 Sliding Doors I'm just, I'm just checking where you all are placed, and uh, just before you give the go ahead, just as you're sort of getting, because you've never, I imagine, Mooney, you've never fired a rocket launcher before. Not that I remember to. And you, you don't want it to be like that scene in Four Lions where he's just holding it the wrong way and it flips him over, <laughs> blows up the house behind you. Um, so I'm assuming you're like taking a bit of time to sort of work out which ends which, yeah. Yeah, I have a good you all it. hear from outside this voice saying, uh, "Well, now you all in there, are you? Found the armory, and you realise it's the doctor, it's Doc Brenner. Oh, I'm going to enjoy watching him turn into a vapor." <laughs> and he says, uh, you "Want me to do it now?" Ed, Edward, you in there? I gave you the benefit of my house. You want me to do it now before he finishes his speech? <laughs> Good luck with that. I I control time, motherfucker. <laughs> I shout to the door saying, I told you I'd burn down your fucking house, you piece of shit. And then I nod to Quincy. And I He did say he did say that. Pull open friend. the door. And I shoot the bazooka. Great. Oh god. Click 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 click. <laughs> uh do you want to give me a firearms roll? Yeah, fuck knows what it'd be. What, rifle? Uh, actually, mine are the same, so it doesn't... I mean, it's closer to a rifle, right? Kaboosh. 
I've rolled on a 55, I've rolled a 2. An extreme wow. success. That's maximum damage plus a roll. <laughs> well, looking at the stats, I don't need to roll for damage. But what happens is everyone's dead. As the door swings open, um, all of you, what you see is, I mean, especially for Quincy. You know, it just becomes a bit of a brighter blur. Magnesium. And, uh, oh, I'm hiding behind the door as I close it. I'm oh, OK. It. Well, yeah. In the, well, it opens yeah. outwards, though, right? Yeah, it does, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Unless you sort of dodge yourself oh. to the side like that. OK, um, I don't do that. I, but certainly for the other two of you. I, I throw it open and duck out of the way, then, yeah. You see like a handful of people, maybe 10 or 12, um, stood around quite close to this figure of the Doctor in the centre. It's like he lights up slowly, almost just this, almost a spotlight on him. And you see the others around him, the shadow of figures sort of pulse away from him. And uh, he, he looks at you and he, he takes a couple of steps backwards and he says, I showed you hospitality and gratitude. This, uh, this figure, he looks like John Hammond out of Jurassic Park, you know, the straw hat and the white linen suit. And he says, and this is how you repay. And, then, and it hits, and his glasses turn sepia brown, his linen suit ripples, and he just dismembers limb by limb. Uh, one of his arms flies off like 500 yards in that direction, and it's just this pink mist, this scarlet sort of burst fills the air. Yeah, but it does. <laughs> And it looks like it must have done the same to some of the people who were in the who were in the square with him because you you can't see him anymore. Um, there's just this this dust and and red, and suddenly things go dark again. And even for Lafitte, who was uh, looking away, you you get this orange, and then everything's back to its dark normal. Except there's no doctor's voice anymore. The doctor has. Left the building. <laughs> That's what comes from being too far up your own ass. Someone's going to come along and blow you out of it. Who's next? Another bazooka, please. <laughs> I, I, I had him another bazooka. Don't even reload it. Just another bazooka. <laughs> Gentlemen, all we got is time and bazookas. <laughs> we should probably go. <laughs> we should go, I think. Let's get out of here. There was that hole in the wall, wasn't there? Yeah, there was, which is just to the the left of uh, the armory. There must be a vehicle. Get, grab a pickup truck, head up to the mine. Let's do it. Would you step, Quincy? <laughs> so you, you're going to leave, right? Sort of dashing out under the cover of this, yeah, 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 like yeah. this dust blanket, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Great. And which which way are you actually going? Because obviously you, you sort of, you don't, you were brought here when you were unconscious and obviously there's this dust cloud and there's sort of rocks and, and what feel like limbs underfoot wherever you go but in terms of direction mm. like we'll say you say you, you you know on the left you get over to the hole in the wall um, and uh, as you sort of reach that like sort of pit of rubble and the ends of these these walls crumbling down you see up on your left uh, you can see it against the night sky sort of the lack of stars the ridge in black of the devil's backbone rearing up. And that's the direction of the mine, that's the direction of uh, the ravine uh, and everything. So mm. you know that that means that over to your right, although it's dark and it'll be a way away, that will be the direction of the road you came in on, the SO garage, the rest of the town, uh, all of that. So it's your call. Um, I mean, I know, Carstairs, you've had communications or the uh, auditory Some, something visions. I believe um, but uh, well I, I said I mean he definitely yeah. heard some stuff I definitely said in front of Lafitte y yeah you um, did uh, yeah and I, I did mention the spawn so if we if we yeah. get outside the, the spawn of Yig compound yeah you do and it's like you know sort of scrub and um, you know dusty earth underfoot bits of rubble Jack, uh, listen, I, yeah. I, I don't know if your friends are coming to pick us up. Uh, I, I, I'm looking up at the, but, uh, at the mines. Or the, but but, the but I, I think mine. we need to just get out, get ourselves a vehicle and, and hot-tail it out of here, right? Yeah. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, but we got to get to those mines first. That's where it is. But what? Okay, so, Mooney, Edward, Ed, uh -huh. Mr. Mooney, sir, the thing is, there's a... 
You know, like serpents, like snakes. I I, mm-hmm. I saw them when I was. You know the things that were chasing us alongside the car when they let us mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. Those crazy critters. Not quite human, but not quite. I don't know. Dust devil insect thing. Uh, yeah, sure. No, it's not good to think about it, but I just mean. When I blew that one away. I, I I was sure that I knew it. There's something here, it's like a great snake. And it's in those mines. And it's part of how it's it's part of it's part of how they change. It's part of how they become tumorous. It's part of how they aren't what they seem to be, but then they can take on other people's faces. Well, you know what, I, I what you're saying sounds like an awful lot of a hooey. Except I just saw my oldest compadre, my mentor, eye to eye, eyeball to eyeball, and he did not recall the name of the bar he used to drink in every day for 30 years. The Rusty Anchor. That was not Jacob Black. He didn't remember the Rusty Anchor. He didn't remember the... Even you know the Rusty Anchor, El Paso. You said it. You said it when we were in the tent, I remember. That's right. He didn't know it. He didn't know it. It was not him. I have no doubt in my mind. So what you're saying, though it may be mm, hard to believe, yet I must believe it. I certainly don't want any more millers and people like us going missing and getting at the mercy of I'm crazy as a raccoon stuck in a goddamn cabin in the middle of winter. I've already made a pact. I saw what was in the basement of that doctor's house. I've already made my decision. I'm going to die here if I have to. I want to kill as many of these fuckers as I can. We got to get out. We got to get out. Uh-huh. I need you. We'd be having this discussion in of a hit. Yes. Which yes. one do you want? We're sitting ducks right here. I'm just saying we got to get up to that mine. Try and burn it out. And I... I'm all for going up the mine and killing whatever they have and getting this. And I, I sling the shotgun. Sick with radiation poisoning as we can. And I, as he says, radiation poisoning, I bring down the flamethrower and I go, we've got to burn it out. Or, I don't know, or maybe bring it to them. Yeah. And I look up, I look up at the sky. And could you all do me... So, sorry. Sorry. Um, could you all do me a, a spot hidden roll? Um, as I look up at the sky. It seems perfect. Penalty die for Lafitte again. I'm afraid. For me. That's... If there's some snake up in that mountain and I say we burn it out wear its skin and come back down here with snakeskin trousers on and I think it's shit in him. I think it's real old. I think it's real old, I say, looking at the sky, and then I look down at him frantically, clearly not having seen anything that is important. Who you call him real old? No, I mean, I, like, you know, like a throwback, like a, what do they call them? Didn't someone say something when we first arrived here? Like... Reverse evolution. Yes, like that. Like it's like it's real old. Like one of the Goombas in the original Super Mario Brothers movie. A snake like a worm in the earth, old. Like a like a dragon, old. I think that's what they worship. I understand. So. A roly poly pill bug. You gotta, you gotta understand that they they did things to us, Mooney. They did things to us. Well, let me tell you, if it's that old, it's stuck around a bit too long. I'm assuming none of you succeeded. Well, 61 on a 35. Oh, I'm too busy pontificating. Too busy panicking. Well, Jack, you don't see anything, um, obviously. Up in the sky, you see that black ridge of nothing that is the devil's backbone, the sort of vacuum underneath the stars, which sort of reminds you of uh, things that you have recently made contact with, but you don't see anything else of use. You, um, The others view there's no vehicles nearby that you can that you can see. You do notice that there's a sort of a, um, a, a slight blaze to your right now. You can pick it out like a pinpoint down on your right where the rest of the town should be. Um, but you can't see what it is. But you think maybe... Yeah, you know, maybe it's just the... Maybe it's just the windmill again. Maybe they've just, uh, you know, lit another couple of sacrifices while they're down there. Oh, maybe it's um, the sacrifices on the windmill. <laughs> oh, maybe it's just it's the just sacrifice windmill. Burning shit. We need, we need torches. We need torches. We need shit. Hey, while we're here, you want to throw a stick of dynamite back through there, see if we can't blow up their um, armory there? Nice idea. Here, give me those matches. I've got an arm. Have you? I, was I take, say, I take I, the... 
no great shakes to throw in at the best of times. Yeah, I got a one in five chance of throwing something straight. <laughs> yeah, one in five for me when I got my glasses. <laughs> so you'd be throwing it back towards the... Uh, you, you look at me, when I, when I say I've got an arm, you can see that I was a linebacker for a reason. But, yeah. say one in five? Hench. Maybe I'll go one in four. Hmm... <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely shredded. Uh, no, it's not that good. No 25, luck. 25 throw. No luck. <laughs> but 25 throw, I think I've got the best throw, right? Well, except 25 with sure. no luck. Yeah. Right? I mean, well, I'm 20 with 14 well, luck, so that I technically... You're a smart guy. Yeah, but I mean, if you really want to go down that route... Move, you really want to do it. you got like 10 throw and 90 luck. Well, 20 so. is the base for a throw. <laughs> mm. Mooney, what's your throw? 20. 20. How much luck have you got? Uh, 60. And do you want to burn some of it blowing up the armory or not? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> as, I, as I confidently, put the, exactly I confidently put the flamethrower down and I say, pass me those matches to, to Mooney. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jack. This is going to be exactly like when the army jumps ass first out the window. <laughs> yeah. And it cuts to you two going, oh, are you sure? And he's like, it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we've got nervous. Yeah. <laughs> listen, Jack. Listen, Jack. I I can see you, you you got a throwing arm, but you've been through a lot. Look at you, covered cuts and blood. Uh, I I wonder whether we give this one to Mooney. Sh- sure. Good call. Good call, Coach. I say, and I I sit down. Uh, and 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 I just sort of cradle the flamethrower. And I look I look up at them like a like a kid, like a sort of twelve year old. So I reckon we throw this, and then we just run for them hills. You know what they say? There's gold in them there hills. Sure. There's gold in them there hills. And when, and when he says that, I get up like a kid, and I'm ready. And I'm, and I'm watching. Yeah. I'm, get your hands off my sugary nuggets. Whatever the cereal man says. Uh, <laughs> I, spit, I spit in both my palms. <laughs> rub my hands together. All right, give me the, give me the stick. Give me the Dan I, I, I give him a stick from one of the sticks I've got in my pockets. Yeah, and I say, "You better light it, Jack. I can't see shit." Right, right. Um, and I do it. My hands are shaking, but they're, but they're strong. Yeah, they're really strong. You can see that. Although there's a bit of a shake, that's it's it, it and it and it does take. You know, your wanking arm. Well, both. I like to send, sometimes dead in one, dead in the other. <laughs> you said that last time. Sorry. Jack, that's Jack. He's got this thing about distance yeah. and He's got a, observation. I like his sense it's of almost, It's almost like someone else lives inside of him sometimes. Yeah, weird that. Mm. Like a parasite. Um, yeah. As soon as it's lit, <laughs> um, I do this weird little run in a circle, start to quite slow. <laughs> and then... Ah, oh, chuck it. Sort of jogging towards a shot put. Yeah. Just yeah, 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 yeah. And was it underarm as well? Was it underarm? You did an underarm action. I love that. It's like, or is it over? Oh, it's like, it's like a shot put. Yeah, exactly. And as it flies through the air, it's almost like time suspends. So yeah. I stood next to Jack and I say, there is a parasite that lives inside a grasshopper. It's kind of like a worm. And mm. it, it eats out the inside of that grasshopper. It controls it. It drives it to water. Forces the grasshopper to jump into the water and drown, and that's when the worm emerges. It can grow to several times the length of the grasshopper itself. The way it comes out looks like some kind of... And as this speech goes on, um, about this grasshopper in slow motion, and your are in your minds, could you all do me a listen roll? So no, no, you're listening to Lafitte, least, least of all himself. Yeah. For, for the record, I've rolled a 14 on my throw of 20. Hey! Ooh, we didn't, didn't get that, sorry, yeah. It was too, it was too juicy a, a monologue. Well, you yourself and the others can still do a listen roll for this, this moment where time slowed down. I'll spend one point of luck to make that a success. Well, something has happened to me. Oh, no. And it's oh. called a fumble. Ooh. No. He's so wrapped up in his own. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what's happening. Whereas, Whereas he's so wrapped up. I'm the opposite. Grasshopper. I'm the opposite. Carstairs, I think. I, I'm so fascinated by what he's saying, and yet I'm so keenly attuned to this. Yeah, hyper aware. Throwing, throwing on that I've rolled yeah, an extreme yeah. success on my listen. Um, so I'm listening to both. I think. So Mooney, you um, 
But Mooney hears this sort of breathing in that moment of, like, the slow motion as Lafitte is describing this sort of this parasitical insectoid encounter, like, sort of in a cathartic way. You begin to hear this whispering around you, voices and breath all around. Um, and although you, you can't hear any words within it, it's because it's, it's moving down the hill too fast, sort of around you, enveloping you, and then away like a wave, like far faster than, than humans. Uh. Um, Jack, mm. uh, unfortunately, God. you tune into them and... Uh, <laughs> Um, remind me of your your knowledge of Native American culture. Let me um, let me just double check. Uh, maybe. Mm, anthropology one. <laughs> um, do you want to do me a roll just in case? I do a roll with my luck of zero. I think it's probably worth. Yeah. Seeing. I mean, I just rolled a zero four. Oh. Oh, that's very close. If only you had luck. Uh, that is a sixty-eight. Oh. On my one anthropology. Well, it's not a fumble. No. There we go. But you hear these whispers, and you, you feel as if you might recognise a word or two on the breeze, some like a little phrase that maybe it keys in. Like your head, your head can't help but sort of turn to follow the sound, and you f- and then you feel like you might see little shadows, but maybe it's not nothing more than. Like, it could be mosquitoes in your line of sight, and maybe those are dashing fireflies, but they're, they're silver somehow, and, and then you think of those those silver-eyed things again, and their, yes. their speed. Yes. Um, but that's, that's all. You don't get anything. You just feel this sense of a rushing down the hill towards the town past you, towards that, that burning mm. glow that, uh, that you saw before. Um... Spina cordodes tellini, they're called. The worms that burrow inside and then they come out. People, when they see them, believe that it's almost like a grasshopper's grown tentacles, but it's a completely different organism just yeah. feasting off the host. There's something, there's something running by us. Yeah, and as the other two of you tune back in and this, this slow motion moment seems to sort of kind of ratchet up speed again and you cast as you say there's there's something running past us and you you remember the dynamite's been thrown and it's there it's settled down near that broken wall it's still fizzing Quincy you hear another whispering from the direction the dynamite was thrown from back over uh, near the armory room where you came from you hear this this childlike voice saying Papa Papa well, where's Papa? Papa? Shit. There's a child in there. And, uh, there's, a, there's a child in there. And I turn and I run towards the hole in the wall. <laughs> I, I freeze in horror. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, now, I know how long the fuse is on this thing. Um, you guys don't exactly, but that does make sense. Um, and Quinta, you're sprinting back towards this hole in the wall, which... Uh, which makes sense because you've literally just heard a child saying, Papa, you know, Papa, 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 are you in there? Are um, you in there? Do the other two of you want to try and stop him? Um, are you rushing after him? We we haven't heard that voice, right? No, 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 you haven't. Lafitte, where are you going? What are you doing? I hear it with my extreme s- success, or is that just him personally hearing it? Just to double check. Uh, no, because uh, Quincy uh, fumbled. Ah, sorry, yes, yeah, 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 sorry. No, just double checking. No, 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 it's, yeah, definitely right to check. But, uh, what? No. A child? What? I didn't hear no child. There ain't no kids here. Get out of there! I'm yelling, I'm yelling. Get out of there! Now! It's still like, I, I drop the flamethrower, but I keep the shotgun with me. And the, and the other bazooka, therefore. So I leave the other two things there. I sort of throw them off, and I, I, I go sprinting after. Don't go after him! Quincy, get back here! You're going to get killed! Gotta stop him! There, I shout, There ain't no kids in this place! They've all been fed to snakes or some shit! Uh, remind me of your movement rates again. Oh, damn it. I didn't write it down. It's on my actual sheet, isn't it? Uh, I, my, move, my move rate is seven, but I wonder whether I might actually have been... Pulled up short by that comment from Mooney. But quite possibly. Mooney's comment is enough to make me pause and just slow down. And maybe check check my step. Yeah. Just 
Of course, there aren't any kids here. Well, yeah, that is something that you've seen, you've noticed. Is this worth me doing a psychoanalysis roll? Uh, there's no time. Unfortunately, this is all happening in one turn, so this is, like, simultaneously... In, I mean, to test uh, the ability of my comment. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could, yeah. It's the same effect, right? I mean, I don't know why I've pitched that, because my psychoanalysis is one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe a persuade. Well, I definitely think you should do it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Persuade is ten. Unless it's unless it's Quincy's psychology that needs to be rolled. Maybe that's what it is. Or my intelligence. Well, if I'm sprinting after him, do I catch up with him? But I think you're sprinting after him. But if he stops at the edge, he probably at the edge. I think your, your movement I I, rate is. I think I, I think I slow up a little bit. That comment made me go. Yeah. Maybe just take take pause and think. Well, unless you disagree, Jack, I'll say that. Like, if he stops, you stop um, uh, uh, in a sort of, you know, yes, come back this way, rather than, than carry on, unless you want to tackle him or something. I'll run right up to him, though, I think, rather than... Yeah, yeah, OK, cool. Edge. So I'll cut, I'll, I'll, I'll cut the difference. Like, we've got to go. And uh, uh, I'm sure I heard a child's voice. I'm sorry, but we've got to go. Mooney, what was your psychoanalysis role? <laughs> Are we really doing that? yeah. That's a laugh. I don't think we should. But it's not going to affect what happens. What? 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's all right then. I think we should. It's not going to. Well, but if yeah, it's, it's a, a one, one. Say... it's a one. It's no. A one. No. No. She, I believe you. So you have no idea what's going on as the the other two catch up, and then as you reach the edge of this wall, there's like just a silence, like a intake of breath. It's almost like you're. Like you're inside a lung, and there's just this gathering of uh, air and emptiness, and then there's this blast, this breath out, and it's just like you, uh, you both get blown completely across, back away across the rubble onto the scrubland. Um, and could you, could you, uh, well, well, firstly, could you give me um, a luck roll? <sighs> I failed that. Yeah. What? Thanks a bunch. I'm really sorry, Jack. I know it's not it's not a main part of this, but uh, another another really good roll actually. Last time I got twenty six, this time I got twenty three on a zero. Well there you go. The damage on dynamite's horrendous. There's a wall. There's a um, wall in between us. Yeah, it is. It is. But um luckily they weren't <laughs> within the actual circumference of uh they weren't in the blast radius. So uh, Well Well it's it it the damage degrades over distance. Does it? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking it might just be for, like falling damage. Oh, I've got it. I've got it here. Don't worry. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I failed my luck roll as well. You're on 14, um, Dan, for um, uh, uh, Quincy. Yeah, luckily the range, like, it diminishes, so there's, like, a minimum and a maximum area. You guys will buy the wall, like, not up to the actual armoury yet, where you sort of tossed it through the hole, so... Um, yeah, you, you you were still you were pushed aside by the sort of pressure blast of it, but you weren't, you know, caught by the explosion itself. But I'm afraid to say, Bev, you uh, you do lose a hit point. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and Quincy, you don't. But uh, I don't. Bigger target. No. Oh. It all comes out in the reaction time. But you, yeah, you were on the other side of the wall, and um, you saw you saw it get destroyed. But um, you you yeah, you didn't take any major loss. And as you're there writhing in the rubble, you're like, oh, fuck. Can you... Because um, you, you were literally in the middle of this conversation saying, uh, I heard a child's voice. Can, can you do me a sanity roll? Because as far as you're concerned, you just heard a child being evaporated right next to you. Atomized, if you will. I passed my sanity roll. Nice. Well, you don't care about children, then. Apparently not. Well, no, you compartmentalised no, it. You compartmentalised You care a lot about children. You kept your sanity. Exactly. You put things into perspective. That is the spirit of the game. I think I passed my sanity check because I because I was convinced by Mooney that there aren't any children in here and it was just... Mm. It was a figment of it my was imagination. It like a Or someone trying to trick me. Through the... Which is exactly why you turn around in the first place, so it makes a huge amount of sense. Mm, beautiful. 
so you both you pick yourselves up and you dust each other down what's that um, and Mooney like you saw them go down you saw that the last side of that wall basically like, evaporate you I'm sure you shielded your eyes but mm. you would have seen this burst of light and you're pelted with clods of earth and stone and everything but um, nothing nothing that like takes a hit point off you um, and as it settles you you've seen they've been tossed aside and they oh. they've landed over to your left do you yeah, for sure. What do you do? Do you run up to them? Do you do anything? Um, oh, I assume they're dead. <laughs> assume they're dead, yeah. Well, I assume they're dead. And, um, yeah, see how that goes. See how long it. Uh, <laughs> they don't let on. Dan, is there, is there any chance that in that flash, Mooney was in a position whereby he could push the spot hidden roll? Uh... Like may- maybe even with a oh. maybe even with a bonus die because of the flash. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I think actually there is because I feel like there was a vehicle near here that we might have missed. Yeah, may- maybe for a round it it like it blows his ears out. Oh uh, yeah, like, no, fair enough. Such an extent, he sort of he shakes his head and he sort of ends up gazing around, sort of trying to <laughs> sharpen his hearing again. Well, that's very generous. And he sees. Uh, that's very generous. Well, let's give it a go. If you if you want to do that, Moody. No, I, a, I mean you don't have to push the roll. You don't have to push the roll. Sorry, that's maybe not fair. But I mean, unless it fumbles, what's the harm? That's my spot. Hit, my spot hidden is actually really good. It's a one yeah. in two chance. Oh, sweet. So. I, well, let's go. Look, if you're if you're happy, glad to go I mentioned it, Let's it. go for it. And like, I feel like he's observant. You two are observant. Yeah. Me. Let's. Yeah, I'll do it. Thirty-one on a fifty. Mm, yeah. Boom. Where's the... Oh, shit, there's a helicopter over there. <laughs> oh, luckily, I've got a helicopter. 45. And I've got a helicopter license, yes. No, I don't have a license. What's a helicopter? <laughs> oh. Have you got a helicopter license? No. <laughs> we, 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 we're rushing back up to Mooney. And at that moment, Mooney's spot hidden succeeds, right? Yeah. 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 So you see... And it's it's the sharpening of that explosion to your, your your other senses, but it's also, you know, following where that wave of whispering went before. And you look down into the town, and you suddenly you have this pitch perfect this view, and you know exactly which building in the town it is that's on fire, and it's the the bookshop. No, oh, I see. And you see uh, shadowy figures. It looks like sort of rushing across uh, from that blaze to that to the white painted church that you went past Mm -hmm. Um, and you actually you see the door opening like a crack and a figure sort of slipping inside and it closing again you see these these other shadowy figures sort of like chasing or you don't know but they sort of gather around the front uh, outside Um, but that's sort of secondary to what you're doing at the moment which is uh you know, carrying flamethrowers and uh, <laughs> and heading mine woods. Are we, is, uh, I, I'm, I, I feel like we're dragging ourselves back up the... I feel like it's uphill, right? Back up to where Mooney was. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, back up that way, up towards the, the shadow of the devil's backbone. Um, but you can see, looking that way, you can see sort of set into the rocks you know into the cliff face almost these steel doors um the sort of steel doors you get from a a closed off mine shaft like within 200 yards of you up around the back of the the compound i guess we're making our way to them i say listen fellas I got a, I got an overwhelming urge to go down to that church if everyone's gathered there and blow it to kingdom come. But uh, I say we get in this mine shaft, kill whatever's down there, purify whatever needs purifying, and we've done our duty for the uh, environmental health, as it were. Uh, perhaps not in the manner they predicted, but still. And then uh, if we have time on the way through to find ourselves a vehicle, I would very much appreciate the opportunity to scale the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the bel- belfry of that church and drop a load of frag grenades and dynamite down there when they get to him 362, the Lord is my shepherd or whatever. That would be very nice. Wait, 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 I don't understand. What's, Mooney, what's, what's, what's the hard on you got against the church? I don't get it. Oh, they, I just got a feeling. I just saw people gathering. Uh, it sounds like I, th- I think most of the town is going to be in there. 
So it'd be the perfect opportunity to kill all of them in one go. Save me a long night. Isn't that Thunderbird Gifts burning? Yeah, most probably. Is that... Why'd they set fire to that? Couldn't tell you. Is there anything else burning in the town? You can all give me, if you want, an intelligence roll when you hear that. <laughs> to see if you can figure out the sort of the, the pattern of why that specific place is burning. I mean, I know why it's happening. I've got an idea. Well, you think you do. Mm. Oh. All right. Intelligence roll it is. Is this the kind of thing you can push? Or is this just a straight fail or... I'd say you can... Because I'm in a really good... I'm in a really good uh, position to push things in my zero luck. Yeah. Hard success for me. Uh, regular success for me. Well, an 89 on a 75. Well... Which is very... It's it's very Beverly. It's very Beverly to posit an idea. It is very Beverly. And then not fucking... Uh, Maybe you, you see the expressions on your compatriots' faces and you think, maybe I'll wait until they've... Before I push... But I don't know, unless you want to. I, I think I know what I do. I go, yeah. say, isn't there a site on that um, bazooka? And I pull up the bazooka. <laughs> hey, <laughs> careful what yeah. you're doing with that thing. And I, and I look down the site to see if I can get a little bit of, um, a little, a, a little bit of a closer view. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most desperate pressure thing I've ever invented, but it is midnight, so why the fuck not? No, I love it. I love it so much. It's such a stupid, yeah. such a stupid <laughs> offer. <laughs> hey, it's endgame, right? It's endgame. Okay, it's okay. We're fine. Yeah. It's not a fumble. Still a fail. Oh, dear. Yeah. Guys, that's a 95. That's a 95. 86 and 95. So I think initially I'm looking at Thunderbird Gifts to kind of, because that's what's on fire, and then I'm getting the reflection. Yeah. I'm moving up to the church. So I'm going from Thunderbird to the church. This yeah. would be my final desperate plea to you as a GM. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and the other two of you, your your successful intelligence roles. Yes, right? yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, you think about when you were in Thunderbird Gifts and talking to to John Thunder, the, the patron, um... And you remember him talking about his his friend Billy, mm. and the fact that that when he did, he looked up and you saw him staring at what looked like mm. sort of sigils carved into the plasterwork above the doors and the windows. Yes. Um, and obviously that didn't mean anything to you at the time, but as you see Thunderbird gifts on fire, or you you hear about <laughs> Thunderbird gifts on fire in the case of Quincy, and the the shadowy figures chasing from there to the the white painted church and then like gathering around the front of that building um and you think like ah oh, shit like mm. we well we never we never went to the actual church we never met the reverend you like you met reverend osteen and you you went to his sort of strange tent revival circus on the <laughs> outskirts of town but whoever the local reverend is or might be you never made contact and maybe that's who billy is maybe that's who John was referring to, and maybe there's something linked there. And like, why, why did he look at those sigils when he did? Maybe it's, maybe there's some form of protection, and maybe the fire has broken that protection, um, and that's what comes to you anyway. And Beverly, you, uh, uh, sorry, not uh, Beverly. Um, <laughs> Jack. No, he, that's his name, Beverly. You can call him Beverly all the time. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciate that. Like like Perry from Peregrine. But, um, you see... Um, let's not start that again. <laughs> I still don't know which one's wrong. Yeah, let's not get that started again, in, indeed. Um, <laughs> but but as you, Beverly, as you scan over towards the church, you see these, these shadowy figures gather around the front of it, sort of closing in, it seems. You're... You're pretty, you're, you're pretty sure they're people. They they look enough like people, but um, mm. at this distance, you are you're reminded of um, that image you had days ago in the the reflection of the shop window when you fumbled your role of the the locals moving like insect people, sort of crawling and clicking and and they, these figures they do now you think of it they do look like ants or, or spiders or like roaches just covering that that desert land in the dark mm. and at the last minute the mass seems to part and you see 
you see like glimpses of whitish hair, but not 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 like Osteen's, like sleeker, like smaller figures. But there's this rushing of long hair or fur, and you're reminded of those those silver-eyed figures from before. They seem to like be rushing at the door in a split second. These these whitish shapes like shifting or flickering into it, scuttling like 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 a small tide pushing against the doors, um, and whatever it is that is entering. Like, rather than the the silvery hair of John Thunderbird or or the the uh, mane of Reverend Osteen, you think of these small humanoid figures you've been seeing for days, which you think have been passing you down the hills. That whispering that went past you like a tide, with their silver eyes glinting, and your trigger finger just jolts. And you all hear this, you see this smoke trail of just... And then just this tiny orange blip of... As it hits the front of the church. And you see it begin to cave in. Oh, God, no. I, I'm i sorry. And I drop, I drop the uh, bazooka like it's hot. Yeah, and... As you drop the bazooka, you hear this buzzing again suddenly and you hear in your head, That's all right. We were not concerned with such people. Have you cleared the mines? And then I say, That's all right. We're not worried about them. We'll deal with the town later. We need to clean out the mines. I look at him in horror. As your friend said... And then I start humming an old country tune, but it sounds kind of like buzzing. Country road, take me home to the place I belong. Oh, God, Lafitte. Oh, God. We are the Migo on the planet Pluto. Take me home. <laughs> what is it? Islands in the sky. <laughs> but it's islands in the stream. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's so disturbing. It's like five country songs merged together. Jack, are you listening to me? All right, fine. Me go, you stay. <laughs> it jolts me out of my... Uh, no, revenue. no. It's my go. <laughs> <laughs> You're a f- uh, so well, you do at least get the impression that from blowing up the armory, from the, you've caused a lot of devastation in this this small patch around you. So you don't get the uh, instinct that anyone is directly following you now. Good. So glad that doctor's dead. I am only sad that he didn't suffer for a long time at my hands. Yeah. No, if only you hadn't used a bazooka, maybe you could have made him suffer for longer. Well, I had. Justice is justice, right? There was a group. The opportunity was presented. Yeah. Um, I'd love so to have strangled him. As we make our way up <laughs> to the, the these big iron doors of the mines, I say, yeah. I've I, I got to be honest, I, I don't quite understand what, what the plan is here. and We're going to find a, a vehicle up here. We just need to get out of this town, right? I mean, you know best, Jack. You know best. I, I, I think I'm a bit ashen-faced in the moonlight, but I, I look to you, Lafitte, and I do say... I, I'm not sure if I know best, but I'm. I want. I want. I want to level with you guys. I, th- I think we may have a way out. We might be able to not worry about the vehicle so much if we can get what they're protecting down there. Well, I, I'm not sure. I get. I, I know it's a lot to ask. I guess we'll know one way or another. We get in there. You can try for a vehicle if you like. Well, it, but I, I don't fancy our chances out on the, on the road. I don't want to get split up again. We'll stick with you. I don't want anyone else coming into this town and f- getting turned into meat sacks and cattle by some whatever the hell lives in this mine shaft like you're saying I, I I got the millers on my conscience and I might have us yet and I don't want any more you think this is Yig you think f- Jack down here M- maybe like a part of him who in the what now it 
That's what they call it. Osteen wrote it on the wool, right? They mentioned it before. They said they worship... If that's the right word, they worship this thing called Yig. The Y, it looks like a a forked tongue, and the I looks like the body of the snake, and the G looks like the coil musculature of it. I, I can't explain it, but it's true. It's it's what they believe. And I... I, th- I saw that... L- l- listen, M- Mooney, I saw that weird tumor thing that Jack said he saw in the tent. You know, we, we thought maybe he'd had too much sun or the, 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 the drink had disagreed with him. I saw it. I saw the Reverend transform into... That that Blackwood, there's something strange going on here, and it ain't just the people. It's some. And you can't believe I'm saying this word, but some kind of supernatural power, but evil, goddamn evil. I think I think when he says that, I I suddenly take a step back and I go, Oh God, I think you're right. And you, you all realise you're you're right up against the the metal doors um, on this rock face. Yeah, yeah. And although they're they're closed, there's there is a very small gap between them that you might just be able to squeeze through or push through. Um, and a, as Lafitte finishes saying, "There is evil in this place. There is evil." You, you all hear this high pitched shriek from like. We're only like sounds like a hundred yards away. It's down towards what's what's left of the church, which you just blew up, and um, you see this. You you see it reminds you of Seth. Remember that fella mm. Um, mm. when he was when he was writhing in the ground and he pulled himself up and out of the mud. Then you you realise. Like with, uh, like with, Father Dougal and Father Ted, your perspective's all off. Mm. This, this is far bigger. This is near. This is far away. And there's this worming thing, or a couple of huge worming things making their way out of the earth and and sort of twitching awake, mm. burrowing up. And you see them shaking their heads, shaking the soil loose off them, and looking towards you. Mm-hmm. It's like their yellow eyes are pinpointed on, pinpointed on you. And they, they look, they look very much like rattlesnakes. But again, the perspective is clearly off. You realise that at this distance, they've got to be at least forty foot long, and you just hear this, this. hissing and they start to writhe up the hills towards you these there's there's two of them uh, what is it what is it I can't see tell me what 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 are you looking at we don't need to see that you're right it's evil and I've made a deal with the devil we're gonna try and double cross them and I don't know how but we gotta get out of here first we'll make good in it right right Mooney that's how this stuff is done right you make a deal and then and then you back out in it later if you have to for the gold that's what John Lafitte would do. Look at the size of those snakes. <laughs> Don't talk about the snakes. Don't talk about the snakes. Let's get these goddamn doors open. Is that a sanity roll for the snakes? <laughs> How did he get these doors open? Yeah, I'd say that's a sanity roll. Dear. Sorry, Joseph. <laughs> I, I, t- I turn and I look at these doors and I'm saying, let's get these goddamn doors open and I'm standing there with a shotgun in one hand, yeah. an empty bazooka in the other, yeah. and this f- flamethrower, the only thing covering my privates. Well, I failed. Can I have a bonus die on my sanity roll because I can't see very well? <laughs> well, you're only having it described to you by the other two, so <laughs> to be fair... He did say, look at the size of those snakes. He did say that. And I'm acting very weirdly. I think you know there's something huge okay, fine. approaching you, even if... I you passed see. it. I passed my sanity roll. Hey. <laughs> oh, nice. I rolled a 10 on my 24. Yes. So does everyone pass? I failed. No, I failed. No, Mooney failed. 39 so, on my 23 sanity points. Amazing, I've only lost two. So, Jack and Quincy, you do manage to sort of shoulder your way through that, that gap in the, between the metal doors, like scrape your way in. Oh, shit. And um, uh, as you get in, uh, Mooney, could you get, roll me a D4? 
three. Uh, which I think... Hmm. Yep, that's indefinitely insane. Oh, it's just oh, gone. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Those snakes are pretty big. Shit, shit. Those snakes are 40 foot long if they're... If they're an inch, snakes ain't meant to be that long. <laughs> <laughs> They're not close up these far away. <clears throat> Excellent. And, uh, and I'll put the bazooka in my mouth and pull the trigger. Great. <laughs> you, um, <laughs> luckily, it's empty. Uh, do you want a D10? Uh, One. Ooh. Oh, we've not had that yet. Oh, dear. Amnesia. The investigator has no memory of events that have taken place since they were last in a place of safety. Uh, Um, Jesus Christ. When was the last place of safety we had? Well, I mean, marathon. I turn turn to Jack and I go, I I grab Jack by the arm and go, Jack. That's a Jack. I don't know how big them snakes are, but if that's where the way snakes is around here, we need to get back to that garage and see if they fixed our car. (laughs) God. Mooney, we ain't going back to that garage. Get, get in here. Get in here now. Wait, wait a hold on a minute. What do you mean we're not going back to that garage? They got our car. Uh, but they're fixing it. They're fixing it. Well, it's right. How long's it been? They should have fixed it by now. It's not ready. We got to get in here. They, they said there was a hold up. Maybe, maybe you forgot. Maybe, uh, Let me talk to them. There's mechanics. They always say there's a hold up, but not now, Mooney. Those snakes are heading for us. I know I'm an insect man, not a reptile man, but they look like they they look they look like venomous motherfuckers. I tell you that. We'll be safer in here, I think. Come on, it'll just be take ten minutes. We'll stride up there to the garage and have a word. Be better if we got our car back. It will be, but let's get in here first and just uh, pick up. Already really trying to close the doors. I mean, there's a small gap. I'm trying to trying to get Mooney inside. I think I'm holding on to him because I can feel he keeps every time he speaks. I feel like he wants to move away. And he's got my arm, and now I've got his arm, and I'm going. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Mooney, are you resisting this to the point where it's a uh, uh, like it would be a maneuver or a brawl roll? I think I'd rather try and uh, understand. I, I I'm sensing that it's all wrong, but I, I don't think I've quite. All I mean is the other two of you can sense that these 40-foot snakes are worming their way up the hill towards you rapidly. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to get Mooney inside the doors. <laughs> totally. So I'm just saying, are you at the point where you're like, you're actually pulling him in Big. or are you still Fast. negotiating? I think he's 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 got it, but I haven't. He's got, I don't think I would be that quick. I think I'm just going like, why the fuck yeah, are you not... Why yeah, are you yeah, talking yeah. about the garage? Why you, and so I'm, 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 I'm stunned by his... Uh, I say, for Christ's sake, man, I got no pants on. Let's yeah, get in the shit. goddamn What happened line. to your clothes, Jack? It's not I'll that t- hot. I'll when did it get this dark? That was sudden. Tell you later. You don't remember? Listen, Mooney, there's this real Christ. great bar in here. I heard they don't got... don't remember. I he doesn't, they got, I he doesn't they remember. Got, uh, nicest girls in the whole town. They said we should pop in here for a drink. Do you not remember? They said pop in here for a quick drink, and then we can go pick I up... I pull him in. I'm too old for that business. We're here to do a job. No, you ain't too old for this. You de- Hey, you ain't... You, you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to throw him in. Is that a... It's a brawl maneuver. I'm, attempt, I'm attempting a charm roll. <laughs> At the same time. Great. Well, b- both of you, let me know how you do. You ain't too old. No, the girls will be all over you, Mooney. Trust me, trust me. Uh, you're, ha- you're a handsome, handsome devil you are. You don't look a day over 35. When he says 35, that's when I throw him. And I've rolled a zero two on my charm. Wow. Ooh, and I've rolled a zero four on my brawl. This is some of my best rolls. So you both did brilliant. Uh, so I've also rolled an... I, I've, I've manoeuvred him. Unless he'd like to fight back, of course. Which he could try and... Or dodge. He could try and dodge. So, Mooney, as you see these two giant worms moving up the mountainside towards you, and you also feel these two opposing sort of influences tugging at you in in reality up close, um, do you go with them, or...? I, I mean, I go with them. I don't feel that strongly about them. We just both rolled extreme successes! <laughs> No, I know, but he can still fight back if he wants. Cully? Not against a charm roll. He is in a bout. He is in a bout. That's right. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't feel. I don't feel that strongly about the garage. It's just like, why are we doing that? 
So I'll be like, oh, all right. So, so you're being dragged through the doors, and you, you feel your shoulders sort of shifting against the wet, and then you're you're through and on the other side in the dark. Get your hands off me! Where's, where, where's the equipment? What's the point of going down here if we ain't brought the equipment? Here, here, and I I thrust the shotgun in his hands. Take that. That's the equipment. Really? Oh, I thought I was a fake scientist. <laughs> It's dim light, but look, looking at the size of the doors once you're, once you're on the other side, you see that there's like sort of levers and mechanisms and cogs. And, and do you want to try and shut them? Yes. Like, do, do you want to try and shut the doors more completely than they already are? Mm. Yes. Oh, God. Cool. Mm. Massive snakes coming up the hill. Yes. Well, do you want to give me a mechanical repair? Yeah, I think my instinct is I try and shoulder one of them. Is there any movement from that, or is it... Well, they're, they're quite flat together already, so it's like, it, it feels like there's something jammed, it's not like uh, just a force thing, so I, I, you get a bit of a shove. A mechanical repair roll, if that's what a you me- want. A mechanical repair would be where it's at, really. Then, um, then my brain will engage. I have the, 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 failed it, but I'm willing to push it unless someone else wants to have a go. I'll, I'll look at what he's looking at after my initial kind of shoulder barge doesn't work. I, look, I, I see him and I go, hey, hey, let me have a look. Oh, that's good. That's a 10 on a 42. That's a hard. Yes. Oh, shit. Yeah. Great. So you see this this turn lever on this this sort of mechanism in the centre, but you you just you look at it, you realise that there's there's rocks and, and bones and there's sort of tufts of hair. Mm-hmm. They're all jutting up between between the doors themselves and the bike on the cogs, and that's what's stopping it. And that, Are you- like, it's a really simple thing. Um... Like disturbing, it may be, but um, you don't think about that right now. I use the butt of the bazooka to, to smash them out. Exactly, smash the detritus out of the way. You slam it closed, um, and just as you do, as as the iron doors close and they lock just behind you, click into place. You hear this. <laughs> These, these two giant snake heads hitting the metal doors from the outside and you realise just how close you were. <laughs> and as the, the resonance on those, those slams against the door pull away, you realise that you're just left there in the darkness of the mines. Hey, it's Fergal. Uh, I know it's a strange time for it, but uh, things are right ahead. Turns out that the local authorities in Marathon picked up three apparent escapees. This place called Abattoir apparently is right by the mines. There's an adult male named Carlos Garza, another named Russell Williams, also the, the latter's son, Randall Williams. They're, uh, they're still in holding now. Look pretty beat up. Thing is, they were also insisting there'd be pushback, like violent pushback. Recommended the National Guard, which, you know, obviously that won't be happening, but I figure, you know, fucked up as they may have been, they're probably not lying. Uh, anyway, the state's team is about half an hour out now. I'm following behind that. I'll let you know what I find. Keep yourself tapped into the comms. Fergal, out. 
nuestra divertidísima pastorela mexicana del 16 al 30 de diciembre. Corta temporada, boletos en taquilla. Now, as summer approaches, Bunyan Breweries would like to introduce you to some real life genuine customers who've got a few ideas about our new salt water cocktail selection. You'll find them at all... I've invented the Abattoir Negroni tonight. Oh, what is it's it? A, I wouldn't want to drink that. It's it's, it's a peritif. Um, With some radion in it. Um, <laughs> human blood. Radioactive human blood. Uh, a, a, a sparkling water, a shot of gin, and a shot of dry white wine. It's really nice. I was thinking, like, I don't have any vermouth. Ooh, stick some wine in, see, see, see what it tastes like. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's Great. really good. To be honest, you could have chucked a spoonful of brown sugar in there and it basically would have been vermouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, you're the scientist, though, Dan. I defer to you when it comes to that. <laughs> I should have heated up, made a syrup. When Doom Eternal came out recently, they did a, a, a collab with this vodka company, Anchors, where they made smoked bone-flavoured vodka. Like, it was like an umami vodka. I have no idea what like, to had, say. Like, they smoked... Smoked these bones and apparently it was delicious. I was desperate to get a bottle, but it was too expensive. Um, yeah, I got bought some so vodka that. for Christmas once. My brother got a bottle of popcorn flavoured vodka, which was actually quite nice, sort of butterscotch taste. Mine was fresh grass, and it did taste like the smell of fresh grass. What, well, what cunt gave you that? But it was revolting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, of course it was. Yeah. Yeah, like being beaten up on a rugby field as a kid. Yeah, good times. Just yeah. getting fucking grass. In your mouth. <laughs> Soil in your that's mouth. What, um, um, that's, that's what Jack, Jack Carstairs was uh, made by. The smell of cut, fresh cut grass. That's what Jack Carstairs was made by. The, the tackle. Well, the and tackle. As, he bites the, as he bites the grass, the, the grass that's atomised into the air. <laughs> Para calmar la tos. El tren prende el vaporú, el tratamiento que ayuda. Si persiste en la forestia, consulte a su médico.